Today we're talking about video games and videos of video games. Whether you're talking let's plays, walkthroughs or game design commentaries, games are watched as much as played these days. We've had a lot of questions about how to use screen captured video inside HitFilm, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> we're going to be focusing on how to capture game footage on a Windows PC. Now there are several good options and which one you go for will depend on how much control you want. So back in the day the main video capture software was Fraps. But it's not been updated since 2013 and it still costs about £25, so let's just move along from there. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card from the last couple of years, you've already got something built in called Shadow Play. This is a really fantastic option as it's very easy to use and pretty much guarantees high quality results every time. Shadow Play uses hardware GPU encoding so that recording the game shouldn't have any perceptible impact on the game's actual performance. It's super easy, make sure you've got GeForce Experience installed, then hit the Shadow Play button, turn it on using the pointlessly skewer-morphed switch, and then you can adjust the quality, decide whether you want to record your microphone at the same time as in-game sound, link it up to your Twitch stream, and set up something called Shadow Recording. So this is a particularly nifty thing because it continually records a buffer of a specific amount of time while you play. This means that if you've been playing, say, Battlefield or The Division for a couple of hours, you don't have to have recorded your entire game session. But if something awesome happens, all you have to do is hit a key, and it will record the last, say, five minutes onto your hard drive. Now, AMD have an equivalent called Raptor, but it's not something I've used myself, so I can't say whether it's any good or not. But we have put a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. So, Shadow Play is fast and easy to use, and does do good quality, but it's quite limited in terms of what it can do and the amount of control you have over it. Which brings me to the OBS project, which stands for Open Broadcast Software. OBS is a very powerful screen capture and vision mixing tool designed primarily for streaming. You can set up multiple input streams, including stuff like a webcam or a logo, and then record them into the same file or output the whole thing to your stream. It has a ton of controls for adjusting video and encoding settings, and if you're heavily into streaming, then this is definitely the tool for you. Now, as with any advanced tool, it does have a bit of a learning curve. You will have to go into the settings and customize it for what you want to do. But the advantage is that you have complete control over what's going on. In particular, you're going to want to head into the encoding settings. I switched over to the NVIDIA encoding because I've got an NVIDIA card, and then I bumped the max bitrate way up to 50,000. The default is aimed more at streamers when keeping a sensible low bitrate is really important because you're simultaneously uploading it to the internet. But if you're recording locally to a hard drive, it's really not such a big issue. I also turned off CBR. This is constant bitrate. By turning it off, OBS will just adjust the bitrate of the file depending on what's going on. What this means in practice is that if not much is changing in your video, it won't use up as much disk space. If you're doing a recording of a game that has a fairly static UI, or maybe a program like HitFilm, then this can make for much smaller files, because for most of that video, the entire screen is not going to be changing on every single frame. Under Advanced, I tend to change the keyframe interval to 1. This will add a keyframe internally to the video file every second, which will drastically speed up the video's performance inside HitFilm, and pretty much any other video software you throw it at. Last but not least, there's the Use CFR option. This is so important that I'm going to switch back to me sitting in a chair. So, CFR stands for Constant Frame Rate, and when it comes to screen capturing, this is kind of a big deal. So, if you've worked with video files from a video camera, you'll know that the frame rate is fixed and constant. So, if you're shooting on film, it's 24 frames per second. If you're shooting for UK TV, it's 25 frames per second, and US TV is 30 frames per second. Them's the rules, it doesn't really change. But with video games it's completely different because the performance depends on the hardware and how fast it can run the game. So if you're running something from five years ago on a modern GPU, it's going to run at like 100 plus frames per second, so that's fine. 
but if you're running a modern game like The Witcher 3 or XCOM 2 or something like that, the performance is going to fluctuate a little bit. And screen capture recording software tends to record using variable frame rate. And this means that the frame rate of the video file will actually change depending on the performance of the game. Now, when it comes to editing that footage in editing software, including HitFilm, that can be a little bit of a problem because HitFilm's expecting a constant frame rate file. That's what it's used to, the kind of stuff you get off a camera. But when you put in the variable frame rate, it can cause some audio sync issues. So that's when the video and the audio becomes progressively more and more detached. OBS is great because it lets you choose between constant and variable frame rate recording. If you're planning on editing your videos, it's a good idea to always have it turned on. If you're using something like Shadowplay, you don't actually have the option currently of shooting CFR, in which case you're going to want to convert that file afterwards using something like Handbrake. Handbrake is a really useful utility, and it's perfect for converting a variable frame rate video file into a constant frame rate video file. It's very simple, here's how it works. All you need to do is drag your captured video file onto the Handbrake window, switch it over to constant frame rate, then drop the constant quality down to zero so that you don't have any noticeable quality drop during re-encoding, select your output file name from the destination browse section, and then just hit the start button. So that is all there is to it, and you'll end up with a file that will work great in HitFilm and any other video editor. So now that you've got your perfectly captured game footage, what can you do with it? Well, that's what I'm going to cover in my next video. I'll be talking about recording voiceovers and trimming and editing your footage and creating effective banners and end boards to maximize your YouTube exposure. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss it. And until then, many thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.